heart that we just need to uh, get back on the subject of faith. And so we've been doing that on Wednesday nights. This is part six, so if you missed the first five messages, uh, well, you can go back online and, and, and pick them up or get the CDs. I'd encourage you, this, is a, this has been some good stuff. I've been blessed, and uh, because you get stirred up about something, it, it, it's kind of like raising your antenna up, and so as you're looking at it, you're kind of looking at things in a whole new light. Uh, I've been teaching faith for 20, almost 24 years now since we started this church. I went to a faith school. And I've read, I've read all of Brother Hagin's faith books, and, and I, I've listened to teaching on faith, and, and I can teach faith. I could, I could get up here and teach you for a week uh, on just faith and just what's in me. I mean, I'm like a rooster. A rooster's going to gonna crow in the, you know, in the early morning. You're going to hear him go, you know, ur, ur, you know. Well, I, I get up and faith comes out. It's going to come out, whatever we're talking about, but because it's the Word. The Word is the factory for faith. And uh, so if you're never in the Word, you're going to be weak in faith. And you're not going to have your faith developed, and, and, and it's something that you can't live without. We're, we're supposed to walk by faith. We live by faith on a 24-7 daily basis. 2 Corinthians 5-7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. That means you've got to live it. Without faith, Hebrews eleven six 6 says you can't please God. So if you're not walking in faith, you're not pleasing God. And so if you get over in doubt and unbelief, you get into mully grubs, you're feeling depressed... Well, then you're not in faith and you can't please God. And so you got you to slap yourself and get back over, get out, of, get out of that depression, get out of that discouragement. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight. And so we've been talking about faith and uh, really just call it this thing called faith. We're, we're really just looking into what faith is all about. And so if you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to walk by faith. Just remember, faith is a journey. If you're going to walk with, walk with God... Enoch walked with God. It says he walked, Enoch, over in Hebrews eleven three walked with God. I mean, uh, uh, five and six there, that for 300 years, think about that. How many like to just walk with God for 300 years? But when I say like this, that would be our kind of life. I mean, he didn't, he didn't feel it. He didn't really see anything. He just, he just believed God was. And then when he's talking about Enoch and walking with God for 300 years, and then God took him. And, uh, and, and then, then it goes on to say, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Enoch is actually an example of, uh, of the life that we're called to live. And, and so um, one of the most dramatic passages in the Bible that deals with faith is right here in Hebrews chapter 11. And so you really, uh, man, I, 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 and we, I mean, and maybe we'll teach all year. I don't know how long. We're just going, I, and I have taught. I've taught on the spirit of faith, the spirit side of things. And we've gone, we've gone, we've actually taught through Hebrews and all kinds of stuff, but but uh, we'll just dive back in here tonight, and you believe with me? Amen. Amen. You, you, you ready to, you know, just receive something? I believe we'll get something brand new tonight, because I, cause I'm just kind of, I'm always seeing stuff, and, and I'm just kind of sharing with you what God's showing me. Um, but right, he, right here, leading up to Hebrews chapter 11, and, and on into chapter 12, and, or 11, 12, he's, uh, he's given us three, uh, a, really a three-point outline to help us understand the concept of faith. And we told you, really, this outline is real simple. It helps you understand it. Uh, the, 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 they're just three points. And to really help you walk through it. And they're all T's. So I hope you remember everybody say T's. And uh, the first T that we talked about was timing. Everybody say timing. And timing is really important. And really, this is where most Christians stumble. Because in this area of timing, we've talked about the fact that faith is not just a moment, it's a life. And if you get all consumed and wrapped up uh, in the moment, then, then you're going to get frustrated. But faith is a life. It's a lifestyle. And so, uh, so we have an example here in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. It says, now the just shall live by faith. Now, uh, we said that the, this is a particular quote. And it's quoted three times in the New Testament from Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk 2, 4 says, uh, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous shall live by faith. In other words, you could put it like this. Uh, your, your vision and faith go hand in hand. There, there's a connection there. We'll see that a little bit more tonight. Um, but, but that particular statement is quoted in, in, in Romans, Galatians, and then here in Hebrews chapter 10. But the difference here in Hebrews chapter 10 uh, when you come here in verse 30, it's the only time that, that has the emphasis of timing. Uh, the other uh, New, Romans and Galatians, there's a different emphasis. But when we get to Hebrews chapter 10, when he quotes this verse, the just shall live by faith, the emphasis is on timing. And, if you, uh, and the timing, the connection that he makes is in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, where he's talking about the vision Remember, he says, he's talking about verse 2, says, write the vision down, make it plain so those who read it can run. 
And then he says, and though the vision tarry, wait for it, it will come to pass. When it, you know, at the end, it shall speak, it'll come to pass. And so there's, there's the picture here of something that many times uh, there's a waiting process when it comes to faith. That's why you need patience. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 concerning Abraham, it says, through faith and patience inherited the promises. We referred to uh, talking, and I won't go into detail because we've already covered some of this. We were talking about endurance. I mean, there's a lot of examples uh, that go along with this. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, when we're thinking about, um, think about in Hebrews 12, uh, where he, in verse 1, he says, seeing that we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, uh, let's lay aside every weight and sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance. Well, there again, that's the word patience. Run with endurance, the, the race that is set before us. So, so you have a picture, again, of a race. You have a picture of a journey, and, uh, and it's not a sprint. Faith life is not a sprint. And uh, now there are moments and there are times that, I mean, we want to use our faith and we're believing for certain things at that moment. But again, if you miss the big picture that faith, that God sees the life of faith uh, is important. All right. And so the first thing we learn again about faith is that faith is a life. Uh, and Hebrews 10, matter of fact, remember, uh, and again, in Hebrews 10, 35, remember, it says, don't cast away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. For it says, for after You've done the will of God. Everybody say after. How many know sometimes a lot of people hadn't got to the after part? After you've done the will of God, you will receive the promise. For yet a little while he who comes will come and not delay. And he's really in that context, he's referring to the fact that Jesus is coming back for the church. And so don't grow weary in the, with the fact that, guess what? You're called to live a life of faith. You're, you're married to somebody, so don't get hooked up. Don't get attracted to the world. You're called to live a life of faith with your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Verse Hebrews 12, 3, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Again, there's an endurance. There's something, there, faith will, cause, it will give you something that will pull you through. It will cause you to endure difficult times, rough times, when people do you wrong, when things don't work out. Guess what? You're in the long haul. You're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. All right? Like Abraham. And you're pressing on. You're living this life of faith. And when you do that, you're a friend of God. Let me tell you. God likes that. Without faith, you can't please him. So again, uh, we're, we're in this thing for the long haul. And faith will cause you to live a certain way, all right? And we talked about that. Faith is not just to fix your problems. Faith is to work on you, all right? So faith is not just a moment, uh, but it's a life. Now, so that's timing. We can, we, remember, we, remember we talked about, the, you know, the pitcher and the baseball batter? You know, uh, the way the enemy, if you want to mess up a, a batter, when a, when a pitcher is pitching, you know, his goal is to mess up the batter's timing. And so he gives him, you know, curveballs and knuckleballs and, and off-speed pitches and things like that. And the purpose is to throw off the, the swing. And, and if the devil can throw off your timing, if he can get you wrapped up in the timing, he's going to mess you up. So that's why you have to understand when, when, when it comes to this area of faith and believing and exercising your faith, if the Bible says if you believe you receive it, you'll have it, guess what? End of, so you have it. You're, you're not setting a time limit. You're just thanking God, I already got it. Praise God. I, I'm not looking for a manifestation here. I'm not, I got it. I'm rejoicing now. I believe I receive. All right? So this, and some, but some people get around and, you know, get a certain point and something didn't happen and they get upset. And there's so many examples. We've all had those. We talked about that. So let me move on a little bit more. The second T that we talked about is the terms, and that's really what we're talking about right now. So, the, so we've got the timing. We've got the terms. The third T is, by the way, is test, the testimonies, and we get into that in Hebrews chapter 11. But, but we're talking about the terms. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith, everybody say faith, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, now, if most people, if you've been around here for a little while or you know anything about faith, most people probably know that particular verse. Faith, now faith, is the substance. Let me give you W.E. Vine's Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words on that, he says, faith is my foundation for my confident expectation. So faith becomes a foundation for something that I'm expecting, my confident expectation. And so uh, faith is a substance. So if somebody tells me, Pastor, we're believing, then you're telling me you've got a substance. And not only do you have a substance, 
you've, it, it's, a, it's, it's something on the inside of you uh, that you have an expectation for. That's your hope. Uh, and, and it's evidence, and you can't see it in the natural. You have no, you have no nothing in the natural. You, somebody says, well, show it to me. Well, uh, uh, it's coming. I mean, the best example I can think of along those lines is a pregnant woman, and they even call, call them expectant. Well, she's expectant. Well, you can't see that baby until it starts growing. But, you know, you, you, even at conception, uh, she's, when at conception, that baby's there. You can't see it. You can't even see the little, you know, my daughter's pregnant now, you know. And, you know at first, she's like, and now she's like, oh, my, my belly's growing. <laughs> so, you know, so, um, but, but we not only know the, uh, the, the purpose here that we're understanding about the terms, God wants us to understand how, how faith works because we don't just want to understand the timing part, but we want to know the ingredients of faith so we know how it works, all right? It's important, again, that's the statement that I heard, understanding how faith works is the most important thing. So, so that kind of got my antenna up. I want to know a little bit more uh, about how it works because we can think we know how it works. Or, and, and I've discovered, you know what, uh, uh, we can realize there's some things we might not be working. And I'm going to show you an area tonight that I guarantee you, probably if we took a, a survey tonight, there's a lot of us in here, we're not working something, uh, we're not working faith right in some areas of our life. Because I know if I'm not doing it, you may not be doing it. Not that I'm better than you, you, you may be, and if you are, praise the Lord. But, and again, these are things that we want to use in every area. So, so uh, we know faith is a substance, and so we're trying to translate it so we can understand it. Uh, and one of the things that we've said concerning faith when it comes to the terms of faith, remember now, we gave you this, it's up on the screen here. Faith is the material of heaven that God uses to take the promises of heaven and cause them to be real down here on the earth. In other words, we've called it currency. Kind of like money, it's a medium of exchange. And so faith is the exchange. So when God gives you the word, faith comes, he gives you a media, he gives you something that you can exchange to, to get these promises in the reality. In other words, faith is the material of heaven that God uses to take the promises of heaven. In other words, a woman with issue of blood, she had, you know, she'd been suffering 13 years all after hearing about Jesus. She got faith and she said she exercised her faith and she took she, she took that currency, she took that material called faith and got what she needed, healing. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? He said, no, somebody made a demand on my ability. So again, faith made a demand. Faith was the material of heaven and God gives us faith for the purpose of, of causing these things to be real down here on earth. And we gave you the scripture of Ephesians 1.3. How many of you know what Ephesians 1.3 says? Ephesians 1.3 says that we have been, everybody say have been. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So, so let's just draw this up here, okay? Here's Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 1, 3. And so right up here, all your blessings. Look at your neighbor and say, all my blessings. All, go ahead and write spiritual uh, blessings in and, and, and heavenly Maybe we'll just have fun drawing tonight. So, so all your blessings, and remember we said, that's kind of like, you know, when you first read that, that's kind of like telling, uh, telling me, well, Pastor Bracken, uh, you, know, uh, all your, you know, all your spiritual blessings are up there on that 10-foot basketball rim, and if you can dunk the basketball, then you can have them. Well, I can see them, but, you know, I can't dunk the basketball. I'm just not that tall. I, I'm not worried about it, but, but, but again, there's a means. God gives us a means whereby we can actually ask, ask access it, access it, they're spiritual, in other words, that's a natural uh, illustration here, but, uh, but they're spiritual blessings, and so we, we, we need the spiritual blessings, uh, let's just, uh, down here in earthly places, how many know that's where we need it, and so maybe those earth things that we need, maybe would be, uh, we need some healing, when we need some healing, uh, maybe provision, for the vision, I'll just put a for there, the vision, maybe, uh, maybe uh, the mind of Christ, how I many need the mind of Christ? Your SATs told you that you didn't have the mind of Christ, but, don't, but uh, 
But you need to know the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. So there's times that we need, we need to access the mind of Christ. We need these things, all right? We need peace. We need joy. And so uh, all, all those things, the spiritual blessings could be uh, God's plan for your life, um, everything that he's provided for you, sp- spiritual blessings, you know, favor, anything that favor, uh, anything in the, in the grace of God, anything that God has for you, that, those would be spiritual blessings. And now they're up here in heaven. Why are they up here in heavenly places? Well, they're spiritual and they're in heavenly places because nobody down here on earth can access them and and mess it up, steal it. Remember, Jesus said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where no moth or rust destroy thieves, break in and steal. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. So again, when we understand this, faith is what he uses to give substance to what's true in heaven. So faith, if we get some faith down here, faith gives substance to reality. Again, these things, listen, this is reality. Down here, let's just say, uh, let's say circumstances. Circumstances can change when you take faith and access the reality. You begin to declare it, you begin to speak it, all right? And so when God gives you a promise, here's the key now. When God gives you, a, let's say faith is, faith is always attached to a promise. So God gives you a promise. And so when God gives you a promise, it comes with a blueprint. So we could, we could call, let's just, let's just do, a, let's, let's just attach this here. Let's, here's a blueprint. Wish I was taller. I could dunk the basketball. So, uh. So God gives us, with with every promise, God gives us what? In other words, when you see something in the Word or you hear in preaching something that God's provided, you don't just just hear it, you see it. You have a blueprint. Healing, in other words, God's promise concerning, let's say Psalm 103 says, uh, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name, forget not all His benefits. Well, His benefits right there, who, who forgives us of all our iniquities, heals us of all our diseases. Amen. Redeems our life from the pit, satisfies our year with good things. Our youth is renewed like thee. All those things, and you continue to get more and more from all these other places. Man, you can get a whole lot of promises built up just in one area. And you can get a big blueprint just built up on the inside. Are you following me? And that's that's an important key. And once you have a blueprint, now watch this. Okay. Let's go back down this direction because I'll be shorter down here. Okay, let's 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 uh, let's okay, we're gonna bring this blueprint back down here. Here's the blueprint. Once you have a blueprint. You need a few things. Now, if you're going to build a house and you've got a blueprint, what are you going to have to have? Well, let's just say you need, you need some materials. All right? You need some materials. And guess what your materials are? Faith is your material. I mean, if you're going to build something, again, and, and I'm, going to, I'm kind of coming back around the backside with this. You need some materials. You need, uh, you need some workers. Everybody say workers. Now, your workers, that might be like angels. Uh, other people. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to learn something tonight. So we need workers. What else do you need if you're going you're to build something? We need, oh, well, you know, you need, you, let's, just, let's just call, let's just, uh, let's just call it time. God gives us time. Why do you think the Bible says redeem the time? Make the most of what? Every opportunity. Redeem the time. So, uh, and so if you've got some materials and you've got some workers and you got some time, and you got a blueprint, and you know what you're going to build, well, how many know that you can get something done, right? So the blueprint, again, is, uh, is it's, uh, let's say, uh, let's, let's say, the, let's do like this. The blueprint is the word. Because, again, that all ties in, all right? Am I confusing anybody here? So the blueprint is the word, the material's faith, your workers are angels, other people, and then there's time. So faith, now watch this, is going to be, what God uses to get from heaven what we need here. So we call this right here. Uh, remember we, we, we talked about this, the bridge. So you can just picture faith as a bridge. So you got a blueprint because faith becomes the substance, right? It's, my, it's the materials that I need to get. I'm trying to get something here into this life right now where I need it, where I can use it, where I can access it. All my blessings. Are they your blessings? Come on, say that out loud. Every spiritual blessing belongs to me. 
They're mine. Jesus paid for them, all right? So faith is the bridge. Faith becomes, let's just, let's just call this the, the faith bridge. Faith is the bridge to get those blessings here into the natural. It's the currency. It's what we're going to use to bring here. And so uh, just, just hold on. here. So, so any bridge, we said, has to have support. Remember we talked about this? So, so if you're going to, you know, big, long bridge, you got to have some, some columns. And so, so I gave you three columns. You remember the three columns that I gave you last time? I know we've kind of been breaking this up, you know, because of being gone, different things. But, but, but the first, uh, well, in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 11, there's a scripture up there for you. Colossians 1, 11 says that we're strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience, longsuffering, and joyfulness. Three things, patience, so let's just draw this right here, patience, long-suffering, and joy. We'll just do joy for short. So, so if, you, so if you're going to have faith, if you're going to have a bridge, every bridge needs some columns, it needs some support, and so you need, you need patience. Now, what did we say patience was for? Anybody remember? You need patience for uh, problems. Anybody ever have any problems in life? Problems, troubles, trouble, trouble, trouble. So you need, God gives you patience, endurance for troubles, all right? Problems. We need patience. Everybody say patience. Um, long suffering, we said, is for relationships. How many know God? is very long-suffering towards us. I mean, in our relationship with him, and he, because he loves us, we love him, because he's forgiven us, Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. So we are to be long-suffering towards other people just like he is towards us, all right? So, so long-suffering then is for relationships, all right? Think again, when, back to patience, uh, again, Hebrews 6 says, through faith and patience, Abraham inherited the promises. Uh, another one, Hebrews 12, we're talking about uh, endure, running our race with, with patience. So, so then here under long-suffering, uh, God gives us long-suffering for relationships. It's very important. And he gives us joy for life. We'll just put life right there. All right, so he gives us joy. What's joy for? How I many know God doesn't want you to go, God does not want you going through life joyless because the joy of the Lord is our strength Nehemiah eight ten says so we're supposed Paul said uh, rejoice in the Lord how many know rejoicing has to do with joy rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice and so he, he says that all you gotta read just read through the book of Philippians he's always talking about rejoicing and joy and rejoicing and joy and he's writing from a jail cell and he said oh by the way don't forget to rejoice Peter talks about joy. So he gives us patience for problems, for troubles. Uh, and again, we're talking about the columns for, for this faith bridge here. In other words, if you're going to have faith to get into this life, into the now, what you need, all those spiritual blessings that you need at the moment, you're going to have to have faith. Faith is the currency, all right? And so you're building this bridge, and then in this bridge, you're going to have to have patience. That's going to be for troubles, problems, all right? Then you need long-suffering for relationships, all right? These three things right here will mess up your faith. These three areas, not the good part. I'm talking about these things right here. These guys, life, sometimes you just go through life and it's like somebody just hits you in the stomach, you know, jerk the rug out from under. You ever had just some stuff that just happened? It's just called stuff. We just said stuff happens. Other t-shirts, but I won't say what those t-shirts say. <laughs> but, but you just, you know, so, so these, these things will, will, will knock your faith out. If you don't, when your patience runs out, faith is over. When, it, when patience runs out, done. And lots of times in life, during the day, we use up all of our energy and stuff, doing stuff, and then when we get home or where it counts or other things, we're out of patience and faith, faith stopped. We're done. And, and specifically, um, or, or let me put it like this, the bigger the, bigger the problem is, if the, if the problem is bigger than the promise, you're done. Did you catch that? 
I said, if, you, if your problem is bigger than the promise, you, your faith just got knocked out. All right? So th- that's when you need a praise break. You got to know how to have a praise break. You know what I mean? If your problem is looking bigger than the promise, you need to have a praise break and start focusing on God and start magnifying God. That's when the Bible says magnify him and start talking about how big he is and how wonderful his promises is and that he never fails and he never leaves you forsaken and that he's never failed you and that he's faithful and you just have a praise break. And you get that promise back bigger than the problem, all right? So, so we've got the problems. And these, things are, these, these are things that mess your faith up. The Bible says faith works by love. So you're going to need some long-suffering because you can't stay mad at people. You can't stay mad at your husband. You can't stay mad at your wife. You can't stay mad at your boss. You can't stay mad at the people that you work with. You can't stay mad at your kinfolk. You can't stay, you know, relationships... If you don't deal with them, if you don't walk in love, if you don't, if you don't have to show some long-suffering and some forgiveness, they will wipe your faith out. You, when, you, when you get offended, if you, let's, just, let's just put this right here. We've talked about it. If you get offended, it's over. Your faith won't work. Now, I'm throwing a lot at you. okay? I'm giving you a lot. I'm, I'm drawing a lot of bubbles up here. <laughs> I don't know why I like the circle stuff, but I, that's just me when I draw. Um, and so what's left? We got joy, right? So what happens? What happens if you lose your joy? You're done, right? I mean, if you, if you lose joy, you lose all sense of heaven down here on the earth. Your faith's not working because faith, op- faith opens the door to joy and peace. It's like when you get in, there, there's nowhere in the Bible that says in, uh, depressed in believing. You're, you're just defeated in believing. You're, no, there, there's joy. It goes right along with faith. If you're, if you're believing God, uh, you're happy. You're excited. You're expecting something to take place. And I'm about to catch up with something here. And so, but if you, if you lose your joy, why do you think the devil works so hard to rob you of your joy? Steal your joy. But he can never really, he can never really steal your joy. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joy is already on the inside of you. You just got to activate it. That means you just got to start, uh, you know, doing kind of like what uh, uh, James 1 says. Remember, count it all joy when you're going through a test or you're going through a trial. In other words, that's just life. Uh, you know, Jesus said, it, you know, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. And so, you know, count it all joy, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So when your faith, faith is being challenged, faith is being tested. So, so that's the bridge. Faith Faith gives substance. So, so think about, again, here, this is our substance here. Faith is the bridge. And it gives substance to the reality of the things that are there that belong to me, and they belong to me here. And when I start getting excited about it, I get my joy. I'm walking in long-suffering towards people, and I'm patient. Man, you're going to start seeing some stuff happen over here. The devil can't keep it from you. Are you following me? So again, faith is this faith gives reality to the things of heaven here on the earth. And so now think about Hebrews 11.1. 1. Again, it says, now faith is the substance of things. Now here's the thing. Let's, here, here's the big thing tonight. I said all that. That was my introduction just to get to here. Faith is the substance now of things what? Hoped for. If you have your Bible there, you might underline, highlight. If you don't have that highlighted, things hoped for. Again, W. Vines Expository Dictionary of New Testament Word says, Faith is my foundation for my confident expectation. So that means if you're in faith and you have substance, there is a, there is a confident expectation right here. You are here. <laughs> you ever going to those boards at the mall, you're looking for something and say, You are here. Well, your confident expectation is here. What are you confidently expecting? This, the reality, to be here. I'm expecting. I'm excited. The woman, is the, the pregnant mother is called expecting because something's coming. So you get the room ready. You get the boy clothes, the girl clothes. The Michael Jordan pink booties or the Michael Jordan blue booties. Booties, whatever you want to call them. All right? And so, something, here's the thing, the, 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 some, the thing that gets overlooked in connection with faith is, is, is this word, hope. Or, 
we could just write it here. I should have just stayed with it over here. Hope is, the true Bible word for hope is expectation. So you get up on Monday morning and you're like, <laughs> you need to check up on your expectation. What it, what the substance of what you're hoping for, because this is where we miss it. We, see, we're talking about God's trying to teach us, okay, how, how does understanding how faith works is the most important thing. All right, so uh, one of the things that I've really discovered, and, it, and it's interesting, um, over the years, you're pastor, and you're always thinking, you know, man, if I, can, if I could just get people to believe. Uh, the biggest challenge in ministry is, is not inspiring people to believe. I figured that out. It's not trying to get people to believe. A lot of people can believe. It's getting them to have hope. That's the key. It's not inspiring people to believe. It's inspiring people to have hope. Because people tend to lose hope real quick. They just like, they get discouraged. They quit. They give up. They quit coming to church. They're not, they, they need that encouragement. They get, they get frustrated with God. Well, well, I believe and it didn't happen. Well, remember, it's not a moment. It's a life. God doesn't miss it. God doesn't make a mistake. He never fails. Never. Ever. He's faithful. And so, faith, uh, or think, think about, remember David said in Psalm 42, this is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 42, 11, he says, why art thou so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope in God. Where's our hope supposed to be? In God. Not in your boss, not in your job, because I've tried to put my, I man, hey, I had my expectation in that job, I mean, in a, in a, in a in, a, in terms of my provision, but God taught me, your expectation needs to be in me. I'm your provider, not the job. You put your expectation in me. So if you all wrapped up, if you're getting your expectation on that job and that job fails, you're, 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 you know, you're down low now, you, 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 you know. But you put your expectation in me. You're expecting me to come through. You're expecting me to provide. You're calling me your provider. Now, yeah, I'm going to use job. I'm going to lead you and guide you and so forth, but, but you get your expectation in the wrong thing. So he says, why so downcast on my soul? Why are, why are thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. See, this is something that is interesting. Faith, Jesus says, or, or the Bible teaches, and Jesus talked about it too, with the heart man believes. So faith is, is something of the heart. Now watch this now. Faith is an issue of the heart. Hope is an issue of the soul. So faith is my faith substance of the heart my foundation for something that is in my soul which really is the picture back kind of to the blueprint remember we were talking about that's kind of when i started with the blueprint god gives you the promise but that's the blueprint you know a lot of people never get past the a lot of people never get past the promise never get past the blueprint because they haven't stayed in the word long enough to get faith for something that god says it's yours but they won't even look at it long enough to get the blueprint that hope, that expectation. So faith is an issue of the heart. Hope is an issue of the soul. And people believe God can do things. I mean, you ask anybody. You believe God can do Oh, yeah, God can do anything. But the question is, I mean, know what the question is. When it boils down to it, will he do it for me? Do you have confidence? He'll do it for you. That he's no respecter of person. I've had lots of examples. I mean, you know couple can come and ask you to pray for them. They, they want prayer for their marriage. Well, we can pray for the marriage. But after we get through praying, I pretty much have an idea that they're really not expecting anything to change because they don't have any hope. They can, you can ask for prayer, but they don't have any hope for it. They don't see their marriage getting any better. They, don't see, they see it as a problem. They see it, see it as a difficulty. And so they've just lost hope. And people are like that financially. They, don't see any, they just don't see anything changing. They're just going to get up on Monday morning and think, well, everything's the same. Nothing's going to change. Job's going to stay the same. Uh, they get up, uh, you know, Monday morning. Or their body, physically, they've been attacked in their body and, uh, and, and just feeling like everything, nothing's changing. Everything's the same. And, and they don't have any hope. They just lose all hope. How many know what the Bible says concerning Abraham and, and hope? In Romans chapter 4, I believe it's verse 18, Romans 4, 18, concerning Abraham, remember when God gave Abraham a promise, same way he gives us a promise, 
But Abraham was, was old. And he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. But it says in verse 18, in hope, against hope, he believed. Everybody say, he believed. Think about that. Who against hope believed in hope. In other words, in, he had an expectation of God's promises. He was fully persuaded that what God said he was able to do, he could do it. And so in, in that expectation, that, he had a blueprint. He had hope. Faith, in that, faith gave substance to it. Against all hope. Against in the natural there's no way he's too old. Sarah's too old. In the natural, he believed against in, in that expectation, he believed that God was able to do it. Sarah was able to conceive. She counted him faithful. I mean, there's another example there, but but many, you know, uh, so we have to understand, uh, man, this is huge here because hope is really is really going to fall into the more of the category of what. You see what it is that you really want. Faith becomes the substance of things hoped for. Now, I'm going to give you a really good illustration and we'll close. Evidence of things not seen. You can't see it in the natural, but you, you better have a picture of it on the inside. And, 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 if you, and, and if you can't really see it good on the inside, uh, why do you think I keep, I, I keep this building up here for a reason? It's not just so you can, people can come and go, oh, wonder, isn't that pretty? That's such a beautiful building. No, because every time I come in here, I look at it, I point at it, we pray, and I start, I start thank you, Lord, for those windows. Thank, uh, and, you know, but I, I, got, I, I can go through that building in my mind. All right? But, you know, uh, you know, and, and Rita, she's in the nursing area and dealing with doctors all the time. You know, doctors say if there's one thing, probably the biggest thing, if they could prescribe something to people other than medicine, you know what they'd like to prescribe? It's hope. Because they deal with people on a regular basis every day. And you know what? And I've, and I've, uh, I've heard things and read things and seen things. And usually you can have two people diagnosed with the same problem, same situation, same diagnosis, same outcome. One dies, the other one makes it, and the only difference was one had hope and the other one didn't. And the ones that go through surgery and shouldn't come out came out because they had hope. And the ones that went in just giving up, saying, well, I probably won't make it, didn't make it. All because of that little word called hope which really is bigger than just hope, it's called expectation. How big is your expectation? I mean, you really have an expectation off of the seed that you sow. <laughs> you, can, you understand? Or when you're serving God, you have an expectation. And man, whoo, when I get to heaven, God said, because I'm serving him, there's a crown waiting for me. Mansions waiting for me, things stored up for me. I mean, so, so that helps you in your faith life. I mean, you, there, there's a lot more than just, than just stuff. You don't understand what I'm saying? This is bigger. I'm, I'm, trying, to give, I'm trying to give you illustrations, but, but it's bigger than just stuff. Abraham hoped when all hope was gone, naturally speaking. So uh, remember this verse, Romans uh, 15, 13 says, May the God of all hope. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing. That you may abound in hope. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to abound. We should be, ab we should be abounding in expectation. Because of what God said in his word. His promises. What he, said, what he said in his word. The blueprint. The promises. Everything here we get to get a hold of and receive it. We should be. We, we, God is a God of hope. That's why we sing songs. My hope. Is in you, God. You know, I mean, we sing lots of, there's lots of songs that we like. I love, there's some great songs about hope. God is my hope. Putting our, you know, our trust in him. And that's what the psalmist said. God's my hope. Put your trust in him. Why so downcast? Why be discouraged? Why are you depressed? Put your hope in God. He can't fail you. Can't be depressed. Putting your hope in God. 
And that'll, that'll cure depression right there, if you believe it. If you believe, if you believe God in his word, you cannot go through life depressed. I mean, you'll have a moment, but you have to slap yourself and say, cut it out. God is not happy right now with you. You've got to get happy right now. You've got about 10 seconds. Make an adjustment. The God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. God's a God of hope. So no matter what you're going through, he's with you. Faith is the substance. See, this, this stuff is real. Why would God say, I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing? Just so we go, well, isn't God wonderful? He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Well, he put it there so we, we could get it. What are those spiritual blessings? All his promises. Spiritual blessing after spiritual blessing after spiritual blessing. They're all ours. All right, so let me close with this. One of the classic illustrations of hope is kind of like this. Maybe you guys, are, I think this is the best one. I, it's a classic illustration. Maybe you've heard it before. But, but how many of you have uh, air conditioning in your home? You ever seen that big unit that's sitting outside? We've got, we got all, all, you see these big black screens up here. Those are, those are connected to uh, five-ton units that are outside. Those, those five-ton units out there are really the power. That's, that's like the faith. Your faith is like those units that sit outside your house. Now, how many know everybody, probably everybody in here, we have faith. We have substance. See how important this is? We have substance. We got power. I got the power. You can dance and you can shout all day long about the power. But also right over here in the wall, these little white boxes there, there's four of those little white boxes here. Those are called thermostats. That's your hope. Without thermostats, without hope, your power is going to sit out there all day long and nothing's going to happen until you make an adjustment of what it is that you're expecting. And it might be 72 or depending on your hormones in here right now. You know, we, we can't make everybody happy all the time on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, you know. So some like it 72, some like it 69, you know. So, so, but depending on what you like. So if you want a temperature in your room at a certain point, you go over to what? You go to the thermostat and you set it at what you want. That is your hope. If you are not using your hope to set what it is that you're wanting based on what the promises are because they are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus, thousands of them, and until you start saying, okay, that's what I want right there. That's where I'm putting my expectation. I'm, I'm believing. And then you start what? You building the bridge. You got your bridge going, right? You got the blueprint of what it is. My healing. It's right there. That's what I want, healthy and strong. All my provision, my finances, oh yeah, I'll take some of that. I mean, all the promises. Yes and amen. So, but without setting it, you understand, that's your hope. That is your expectation. Without that thermostat, without setting it where you want it, nothing, there's no power, nothing's going to go to produce what it is that you need God. So, here's what you need to do. Be a high expectation person. I have high expectations. You should. There's nothing wrong with it. You say, well, well what, but what if you have high expectations and they don't come? Well, what if you hit half of them? I'd rather have half of those than set no, no, have no expectation and you hit all those. You understand? But no thermostat, nothing, nothing to work on. That's a lot of people. They lost hope. They have no hope, no hope for their marriage. They, a lot of people just getting up every day and, and expecting everything to just stay the same. Nothing's changing. They're not changing. And you're probably not changing. <laughs> you know, you understand? Because if you were changing, you'd start having something, you'd be having something going on inside of you too. You'd have an expectation of something. You'd come to church with an expectation. You go out in life with an expectation. You know what? I'm, I'm a blessing going somewhere to happen. You understand? So people, uh, people don't need faith. We can talk about faith, but really, really what people really don't need faith, they need hope that life's going to change. God can change. God can change it. God can work in the situations, and, and you have to see things changing. You have to see that your life, you, you have to, at some point, you got to look at yourself in the mirror, at, at whatever, and you got to say, you know what? Life can be different. It doesn't have to be this way. 
And that's really what happens in people's lives, financially, physically, whatever you've been dealing with. You have to say, you know what? This does not have to stay this way because I got a thermostat. I got a mouth. And as much as you want to talk about it and where you want to set it and you want to get that thing going, our hope, by the way, it should not be all wrapped up in this world. Paul even said in 1 Corinthians 15, if our hope is in this world only, we are most, it's a sad situation in this life. So most people think that they need faith. Really what they need is what? So think about it. I mean, if you just come over to this little thing about if I just, we just did a show of hands or we had everybody just write down on a piece of paper, man, have you had, how many, what kind of high expectations do you have right now? Would you have any? There might be some, there might be some of you working on something. Be a high expectation person. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. What you do is you, 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 you can expect things and expect from people and from God um, but if people, it, it, when it comes to people, if they don't deliver, that's their, that's their issue. That's not your fault. But you can believe in people. You can, you can have an expectation in God. I mean, uh, he says he, he, he's the one that we put our hope in. But really, uh, and this is a whole other side, and I'll, I'll stop, but, but you, you really get over in this. This really has to do with your vision. Faith goes to work. To produce the blueprint. It's your vision. What you see. What you, what you have down on the inside. It's what, in, in your faith, it's what you're communicating. It's what you're confessing. It's what you're talking about on a regular basis. And Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so that's your vision right there. Did I help anybody tonight? Just stirring me up, bro. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like, oh, Jesus, help me. Because all the, you, 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 gotta, you need some blueprints in every area. You need some expectations in every area. Get excited about it. Amen? Amen. Whoo! Amen. Let's just lift our hands and thank him. Some of you need to, need to just uh, get some hope. Well, you say, how do I do that, Pastor? It, it's called, really, God gave you faith to believe. Number one, in him. That's it always comes back to him. As I was, as I was uh, just preparing and going over and over these notes and just working on this, I could really sense that there were people going to be here. That's why people give up. Listen, it doesn't matter how bad it, it's been or how bad it's gotten or what you've done or whatever. Listen, don't ever quit. Don't ever quit on God. He's so merciful. That's why he says he's... He's full of mercy and, and, and kindness. and We miss it, but he doesn't. And so that's why the psalmist said, why are you so... Because we, we, we start looking at ourselves. We get discouraged at our, in our own situations. and We start blaming ourselves. And the devil goes, yeah. He jumps right in there with you. Yeah. You are a real turd. You, you have really messed it up big time. You, you should just quit. You should just throw in the towel. Don't even go, don't, you shouldn't even, you don't even qualify to go to that church. You don't even qualify to be, you're a, you're a pitiful excuse for a Christian. And he'll, and he'll just jump right in there and you'll have a big pity party. And, and that's not helping you. Hallelujah. But if you're here tonight, I'm telling you, God is a God of hope. Oh, what a hope we have in Him. That old hymn I kept coming up in me, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Come on, just lift your hands to heaven tonight. Say, Father, thank you that you're my hope. And my hope is in you. Hallelujah. My hope is in you. Hallelujah. If you've been battling, dealing with some discouragement, listen, this is a word for you tonight. Just cast that aside. 
put your trust in God. Just decide, you know what, tonight, right now, Wednesday night, April 20th, I'm making a decision. I'm putting my hope in God. Put my hope in God. Move aside the depression, the discouragement. That's of the enemy, by the way. And we rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. We find any spirit of depression and discouragement right now in the mind. We take, we take authority over that stronghold of depression and discouragement. And Lord, we just speak peace and hope and life and courage to rise up. Courage to stand and be bold. Courage again to believe again. Come on, just believe again. Some people, they just stop believing. They, lose, they stop hoping and they just quit believing. And listen, you got you to gotta get off of that. That's what the enemy wants you to do. You just got to start believing again. Don't quit. Don't quit. Just get back up. Just, just get back up. Just get back up. Put your hope on something. All you have to do is just see one area. You may, maybe whatever area you've been battling or dealing with. Come on, saints, just pray a minute. You've been, you, there's some, you, you've been discouraged about it. Been battling over it. Some people even get to the point of suicidal thoughts. That's how, that's how the enemy works. You got to cast that aside. David cried out in a lonely time. That's what he, he began to say. See, there's a soul issue going on. What is the purpose for the word? To renew our soul, to encourage our soul. The mind, the word washes and renews us. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And your soul is the area where you choose. The soul is where you decide. You, the soul is where you make the choice to believe. So that's where you, you just got to rise up and then say, okay, I choose to believe. I choose to have some expectation here. I just, just give me a little bit of light, Lord. Just show me a little bit. And, and, and he says, All right, I'm just showing you myself. I'm good. I'm for you. I'm not against you. And you make a choice. And that soul, hope is in that soul, that expectation in that realm. And begin to, and, and listen, you, you get back over in the Word. Get over, go, go in the Psalms and read, read some of the life. Just get over in the Psalms. You have to build your soul man up. That's, when I say soul, man, actually it's your spirit, man. But your soul is so connected to the spirit. The, the, the word is the only thing that can even really divide the spirit and the soul. And, but, but, but your soul, again, your mind, your will, your emotions, your emotions, you've been, your emotions have been dominating you. You've got to get back over and say, you know what? Rise up, the will, my choice. I'm not going to let the emotions dominate me. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to those thoughts. I'm not going to let those emotions dominate me. I'm going, to let, I'm going to let the picture, the expectation that God's putting in my heart rise up. Hallelujah. What? Number one, you're a child of God. Number two, God says he will bless you. He will watch over you. He will keep you. He will heal you. He'll restore you. He'll make all things new. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're a new man. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So just lift your hands one more time and say, Lord, I receive. Hallelujah. I'm going to respond out of the new man. Hallelujah. I'm yielded to the Spirit. Hallelujah. Stand up. Let's just worship Him a minute. Just worship Him. God's, God's just, uh, as we just worship Him, just a minute. Come on. God's depositing some, some good pictures. You've got you to change that picture. Change that thermostat. Maybe it's been down on cold. Maybe it's been up way too hot. You've been feeling the heat. Come on, set that thermostat. Hallelujah. Get your expectation. Hallelujah. In the right place. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, just thank Him a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Pray. Show us, Lord, where to begin to hope. Show us that expectation that you have. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word that quickens us. We thank you for vision, Lord. You said where there is no vision, the people perish. That vision is that blueprint. That's that expectation that we have. We're not going to perish, but we have hope. Hallelujah. And our hope begins in you, the God of hope. And we trust in you, Lord. We believe. You said in believing. There's joy and there's peace. So come on, have that joy and that peace restored right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we praise you. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I'm alive to serve him. I'm a child of God. I'm blessed. I'm strong. 
I'm healthy. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I've been delivered out of darkness and into light. I'm blessed coming in and going out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you just keep declaring it and declaring it and declaring it and declaring it and declaring it. Did you get something tonight? Amen. Well, before you go, tell somebody you are in the right place tonight. Love on those that are around you before you go. Bless you guys. Invite somebody Sunday morning. We'll see you at 1030. You're dismissed.